Hello, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. I'm very excited today because I got Peter and Star Grover on the channel, longtime Airstream owners, very committed to the Airstream club and lifestyle, and they're going to give us a tour of the really cool vintage Airstream travel trailer. So join us. Hello and welcome to New Jersey Outdoor Adventures. Patrick, welcome back. We're so happy to have you here and to be able to share our passion with your audience. It means an awful lot to us. We're Star and Peter Grover. We're members of the Washington DC unit of the Airstream Club. We've been in the club for many, many years and we just enjoy the lifestyle so much. This is our 1978 Excella 500. It's a 31 foot long Airstream. And I think it's time that we get going on the tour. So. This is our handy dandy step, which comes in handy in all different kinds of terrain. You just pull it like this, it comes down. It also flips down to make another step. We have this great door. That's a two part door. It opens up and it snaps in place, which is great. And then you also have the original screen door for this, which also snaps. So come on in. As I said before, the trailer is 31 feet long and we have in the front, this is called a gaucho. The gaucho pulls out and if you have guests, they can sleep there. There's this nice little chair that goes around, which is real comfortable. I use it for sitting here to watch our TV, which is up there. This is the table that Airstream made that is really very versatile. It flips out, pull this and it flips out. This comes out here and then you can have six people for dinner, which we have had many times. Now, if you're traveling and you don't want this up, this leg velcros up here and the whole thing goes down. So you have a lot more room in here. We have lights up here and also a vent. Here's our satellite TV. These are called Vista View windows that Airstream has, and these go up and down. So you can also have a lot of privacy. The windows are all original and to open and close them you just push it like this and it snaps shut and they have all the original hardware and that goes like that so if you want to have it locked you can. They're very easy to handle and when you open this it makes such a difference because there's a lot of air that comes through here. These are curtains that we have replaced. The original ones were a little thread there but these snap shut so you have total privacy and we also have had them lined with blackout there's the these are the original 1978 <laughs> shades this is our little clock which is all original this is called tambor and this is where we store things on the road like candles and extra lamps and then because we're always having cocktail parties. This is where we have all the cocktail napkins and things. There's a lot of storage down below here, which I can show you. This is some more tambour. And these are the original little bins that they used to give you. So we do a lot of rallies in the uh, Washington DC unit. So this is where I keep my big plates and tra trays and things so that we can take food. This is the original carpeting. Um, it's still functions very well. Every time we come back from a rally, we shampoo the rug and then it's set for the next time. Over here is, if I want to be honest, where we keep the liquor and also things that we need for the road, like bug spray. We have two dogs that we take with us. So this is where all the dog stuff is. And then we normally have this full of more things than just Jack Daniels. There's um, an interesting thing too here. This arm piece comes off and back down in here, there's a lot more storage. So if you're going to Canada, you can put alcohol in there. Over here, we have a catalytic heater, which is enough to keep the front part of this cabin very warm uh, on a cold winter's day. Very effective. It tends to heat the object rather than the air. We use this quite effectively, particularly early in the morning when I get up to have coffee, it doesn't make any noise at all to, to light it and get it running. We have uh, below that is the forced hot air propane fired heater. 
furnace that is ducted, the exhaust is ducted to the outside, the intake air for it is, is drawn in from the outside of the, of the cabin, and then uh, a blower distributes it out this lower vent here, as well as back in front of the bathroom area. Another nice feature that I usually address from the outside of the, of the trailer is a storage space that I use for uh, the grilling uh, equipment. And it's uh, been very helpful. It saves going in and out of the trailer uh, to get something that you might need uh, either quickly or to set up. Behind me is a really beautiful bit of work that Airstream made, and this is original. It starts off here with an A track uh, setup, AM and FM radio, and uh, also a place for the uh, various. Uh, tapes that would come with that and then have other now other electronic equipment uh, we have some videos for our use on the road and uh, that then it was all to feed this new system this is direct TV there is a, a satellite on the roof we move now into the area where the kitchen and star is the expert this is really handy it comes up so that a lot of times when Peter's grilling outside, I'll put things here and he can just reach in and take it out. But it's also nice when you're cooking, you just have a little extra space. We added this little cutting board, which Peter put holes in so it doesn't fall off when we travel. And I sometimes just put that over here. We have a four burner stove, which now they mostly only have three burners. But this, this oven is a gas oven and it just works beautifully. We've cooked in it like crazy, and it's the original oven. I've even cooked a turkey in here. Um, this is the, the Dometic refrigerator that came with the trailer. It has a huge freezer and a really nice size inside. We, we Sometimes we carry food for three weeks in here, and it, it really is very effective. This is called a china closet, and that's where I store vitamins. <laughs> And then over here, this is where I, when we travel, I put things like bread and rolls and cereal and that kind of thing. And then this is where I keep, I think this originally was for a microwave, but now I keep my dishes in and these are all set for travel so that they, nothing moves. So that's why it's not as pretty, but it, it works. And this is also something very handy. Um, this is when I make lunch, I use this to make sandwiches and it's just more space that you have and then pantry wise it's huge and we have I said we had dogs and so I keep all the dog food on the bottom there and it works really well for now and over this way we have, we have two sinks which work very well this is a, um, a water filter and that's really nice too and here's where I keep all my spices. And this is very handy as well. There's a vent here. These are the original lights that came with the trailer that gives you a, a nice workspace. This is our command center. So I keep all my pot holders up there. And then when you push this, it tells you what your battery capacity is, how much fresh water you have. Um, what you have in your septic and holding tank and gray water and then this is a little thing that we push for our water pump to come on and off when we're not plugged into shore power so there you can see it's almost like an airplane you just touch something and it goes up and down down here there's a lot of space for my pots and pans and all the cleaning materials that I need it's just very efficient when we had our addition uh, in our house built with a new kitchen I kind of modeled it after here. I mean, it's a lot bigger, but this was so efficient that I decided to copy it. This is something that a lot of people haven't seen before. It's called a new tone system. And you take this off and you put a blender on there and then turn this on and it blends things up. It's also a hand mixer and a knife sharpener. And I have used all three of those. These are lights that we replaced. Um, Peter made these the surrounds on the lights using a template from a CD, but these are um, lights that are not hot. I forget what they're called. 
<laughs> LEDs. LEDs, yeah. And this is where we keep all the paper products and other things that we need for the road. Down here is very handy dandy place for all of our silverware and things we need to cook. I, I like to cook a lot, so I take some things that maybe other people wouldn't carry, but I like it. And then we have all of our coffee and tea down in that area. This is our air conditioner. It's also an electric heater. And these are lights as well as vents that you can turn on. I think you can probably hear that. And it's nice because it gives you a lot of airflow. This is a little probably something that not everybody has but it's a nice that works without electricity so when we stop at a rest stop we can have air. These doors close so you can have privacy which is really neat. Two little pocket doors and they snap into place so when you're traveling they don't come out. In the bedroom we have lots of storage. I mean just tons of storage. This is my side so I have all the stuff. These are lockers that you push and they open, they, they hinge down, and I'll get Peter to show you how to do that. We have twin beds that are fixed, and these nice little lights with read magazines with, and places to put your glasses and all, and magazine racks, and underneath, tons of storage for blankets and all kinds of stuff. This also lifts up, and there's storage under there as well, on both sides. And that's where I usually find things that have been lost for a, for a while. In the front, we showed you the air conditioner that has a heating strip also for backup heat. And this is the thermostat that controls the mode as well as the temperature. So it's actually nice to have it um, in the midpoint of the cabin so that it will affect all areas equally. I showed you the furnace location and talked about the ducting. This is the control for that. Um, <clears throat> And these are a special kind of thermostat that works um, differently from, in terms of being, uh, of, its, of its function in that it, the thermostat has a bimetal spring that snaps closed when heat is called for versus the standard system in a home, which is a mercury vial and contacts when if it were moved and, and it would shake, uh, it, the outcome would be really bad. So this is to enable you to ride with the furnace running, which at times you need to do in the dead of winter if you're leaving your um, if you're if you're leaving the water on and not draining it every night. So that is that. And Star uh, talked about the drop-down cabinets. These are very large and tend to be a little awkward sometimes. So there's a plenty of room here, shoes or socks. Uh, they fit very well in there. And uh, this, they're also very light uh, in terms of overall weight added to the vehicle. Now we're in, Airstream calls this the changing room right here. Here we have two closets that are just outfitted beautifully. There's in the back, there's a place for all your shoes along the wall, lots of hanging space. Um, there's also another vent here and a light. So you have, you can leave that on when you're taking a shower. There's another vent here for um, the same purpose. Um, these pocket doors close again for privacy. And on the back of this door, there's a, a full length mirror. So, you know, when you're going out to the campfire, you can make sure you look good. Um, it's a rather large bathroom. Um, we have a full, not a full size tub, but I can get in here very easily to take a nice shower. This pulls over. You can also sit down. Um, we have a, a nice sink. The special screening on here is um, a, a two tiered screen, so it's a, for a little privacy. Um, nice mirrors all the way around. And in here we have lots of space to put all the things you need for when you're camping. We have um, a porcelain toilet, which is not the original toilet, but um, we replaced that a few years ago. This is where we keep all the things for like the laundry and, and other cleaning things that you need for back here. 
Under here is where we keep the towels, and then down here is the water pump. So you, if you need to work on that, it's very easy to work on. Back in here, this was used originally um, as a hamper, and there's little snaps here, that, and it came with a bag, a little striped bag that you snap the, that bag onto here, and all your laundry went in there, but that wasn't something we ever used, so I just keep it for um, paper towels and toilet paper. This comes up, and it's just filled all the cosmetic stuff you need that goes all the way back here. This turns up and down. These are the original lights. This is not plastic. This is glass, and it's really heavy. These were some cool things that they had, too. Toothbrush holder. Uh, we just use it for, I keep my sponge here to clean things with. Um, the, this is for a little space here. Uh, command center for turning on the water pump and the lights and the fan. And I forget what this one does. Oh, that light. That's called the vanity light. This is the original uh, covering on here and this fern stuff. It's very easy to keep clean, by the way. And it's, it's, it's old, but it all works together and um, we really enjoy this. I'll show you the closet. It's kind of big. And I, I keep my clothes in here all the time. And you always need to have jackets. So in the back here, that's just where the, all the shoes are. I don't know if you can see it, but Airstream had that in there. And I really, you know, I never run out of clothes. And there's one on this side, too. Peter doesn't carry as much, but we keep our chairs in here and some little heaters, electric heaters, and another uh, the 12-volt fan. Now that we've seen the inside and how well it's held up over the last 42 years, it's time to look at the outside where we've done extensive work, and uh, I'd love to show you. So going right into this, we have a, an original Zip D awning that is held up again for all these many years. Uh, we're very careful about the way that we use it, however. We bring it in every night when we're camping, uh, just in case some high winds or something would come up. And careful about where we park. We're not parking under trees with limbs that look as if they uh, would become spears and ruin it. It has this beautiful logo on it that came this way from the factory. It has 500 written on it for Excella 500. As we go through here, uh, I'm going to mention the, the steps. Uh, Star had put them up with great ease. This is a double uh, step when needed. Sometimes you're on, a, on enough of an incline that, that the threshold becomes much higher than you now we wouldn't put them down in this instance but there are times that this is really a wonderful thing to have and we put a non-skid surface on this for purposes of um, well to not skid we've, we've been out in in the snow and little snow on aluminum creates a nice slippery slope. So um, this has a, a courtesy light coming into the trailer and there's a floodlight over here for lighting up basically your whole yard. I uh, have uh, also throughout uh, insulated glass which was uh, really uh, a very nice feature for uh, 1978. It actually has a little bit of a curvature to it as well, so they're quite, uh, they're quite neat. This is also comes equipped with a deadbolt lock system, which is what we always use on the road in case uh, for some reason that's another one. There's a second one for the interior. You need a key to operate this one from the other side. It does work. And uh, Using the standard handle, these have a nasty habit of jiggling loose sometimes, and if you're at, at any speed almost, uh, the wind will take that door and bring it around and, and slam it. So we're, we're being very cautious about not letting that happen because we love our, love our airstream. We don't want to see it beaten up unnecessarily. This uh, trailer came equipped originally with disc brakes that were run 
uh, with a vacuum system from the engine. It was quite an interesting arrangement. Unfortunately, when we bought this in 1997, there were no parts available to repair it, and it needed uh, definitely to be almost completely rebuilt. In 2011, Star and I put new axles under this and disc hydraulic brakes that work beautifully. Wow, what a difference when you go to stop on the, on the highway. Um, I would say it probably cuts our, our stopping distance in half. It's that dramatic. Now, um, moving along, for camping and being out just outside, this is very handy to have AC outlets here. We sometimes will use an electric fryer to um, connect to it and, and all the smoke and everything is outside. Our restoration, it was a three-year process. We got on the road in 2000. In 2001, we had the trailer completely stripped of the original clear coat, polished to a high gloss, and then clear coated, which some people would think is a sacrilege. But what's also a sacrilege is having to polish it, a trailer of this size every year. Also, the graphics, uh, vinyl graphics, were uh, replaced as we move along. I have storage here. I use this primarily for chocks and uh, and leveling uh, boards and some tools. So it's kind of, uh, it's all things that are mechanically related. Now as we go around, uh, these are the original uh, tail lights and uh, they all work of course, which they are supposed to. In here are the dump valves. I'll point to the auxiliary, which is the gray water. And back in here, which isn't too hard to get to, there's another valve for the black water. Well, I'll dig and dig and dig. It's, 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 I'm putting my hand on it here. But of course, this would all be in place if we were in a situation where we were ready to dump. So, and then this is where the sewer hose is stored, which is very handy. It has its own outside air, so to speak, and so it's separated from, from the cabin. One feature that people never seem to, to know, this is a polarity warning. So if for any reason the shore power is hooked up in reverse, negative instead of positive, um, that will light up and give you a warning before you ruin anything in the uh, interior. The fresh water is introduced through this uh, coupling here. It's a normal hose connection. It's uh, pretty straightforward. The water heater is uh, was also put in around uh, the year 2000 and it's been um, very uh, very reliable and uh, gives us plenty of plenty of water for our for our needs and I, I did say water heater and not hot water heater because someone will wait to hear me say that that's incorrect the, you're heating the water it doesn't start out hot okay it has um, stabilizing jacks uh, on all four corners that are uh, pretty easy to use. They do all have um, a tendency to squeak a little bit. You can kind of tell when someone's coming in and when someone's leaving uh, in a campground or a rally. So as we move along, there's a locked um, inlet for the uh, potable water which is resides in a separate tank and is delivered into the cabin with a separate pump completely separate in origin from the uh, city water and uh, we always go out with a full water tank and empty holding tanks kind of our mantra and again we're we are leveling up here uh, what we have over here is a small um, 
awning, but very, very effective. Even now you can see that it casts a bit of, of a shadow uh, under it, but it's particularly helpful on rainy days. Uh, we can leave the windows open and it's got to be raining really hard or blowing really hard before we get anything in there. I'm going to back up a little bit and the uh, what you're looking at looks like a, a suitcase from the from the 60s monster suitcase is the uh, shroud for the AC unit and Star and I chose years ago a metallic gray for this as opposed to white which almost all of them were to that date we I like the way that blends in with the theme of our of our unit and off in this direction is the satellite dish and then what we're looking at with the little antenna on top is the uh, outlet for the air for the refrigerator which generates a fair amount of heat it has to have cooling in order for it to function itself it has to be cooled and so the air inlet is, is on this door. It's kind of hard to see, but I'm looking straight through here and I'm seeing, uh, you can see that the air will flow. So speaking of flowing, coming down from the, from the AC unit, piped inside of the, uh, between the outer and inner panels and following down is the drain for the condensate for the air conditioner and that is right here and the other the other thing that we added not too long ago was the um, was a drain for the refrigerator it used to end up coming um, into this little uh, little tub real little tub and evaporate over the years that started to not work so well and began to leak a little bit so I thought why not just drain it to the outside so that's that bit of, uh, of modification. This is the uh, connection for cable which we use occasionally and over here was something that was akin to only high-end automobiles like Cadillac and so forth. These are fiber optic readouts that come from line that is the op fiber optics run back to the tail lights and turn signals and brake lights. And from the driver's seat you can see that there's no way you know when you have a tail light out and you don't want to be told by the constabulary. This is a, a rock shield um, that keeps the windows from being damaged by rocks. Uh, it's very, very, very effective. Uh, no one really knows this, but this is actually a bee that came in. He's looking for a bee van, but he came to the wrong place. That's some Airstream humor. Okay, uh, this carried uh, from the beginning two very large batteries, which we now have set up as AGM type battery which has a, a much broader and longer range of operation and also uh, doesn't produce any uh, gases that will attack the aluminum and steel surrounding. It's also very bad for your health to, to be uh, involved in breathing that in. Um, the old uh, Jack did not hold up past, I think, 40 years, so we, we did add a new one to that. And um, the propane um, with two, two tanks uh, seems to be uh, cover almost all of our needs. One, one will last uh, several weeks usually, unless you're, you're heating in the middle of winter, then it could be as little as three or four days if, it, if you're out and maybe it's 10 degrees or something, you're gonna burn through the propane pretty quickly. But for most of the use, it's, it's, it's just fine. Underneath, there, 
is a full, what is called a belly pan. It was unique to Airstream probably up until about five years ago. So it's aluminum that completely covers the underneath of the trailer. So this helps with heating and cooling as well as uh, protecting the frame and uh, giving a more aerodynamic presentation when towing. It's one of the things that uh, the Airstream was always trying to do and still is, is to make the, um, make the trailers so that they can be towed with smaller vehicles. And for a 31 foot trailer, this, this would have been, uh, if it had been built extra heavy, it, most of the cars or trucks wouldn't pull it. But this, uh, this was done in a, in a way to offer a very light package and uh, just a, a wonderful combination. There is a spare tire under here. I should have mentioned as we were going by it, uh, which I've had to use a time or two, but it's uh, very very easy to get at. It might not look it, but it actually drops down after taking a bolt out and pull it out and, and it's good to go. Well, Star and Peter, thank you very much for taking the time to give us a tour of your beautiful vintage Airstream travel trailer today. Can you tell us a little bit about the history of this trailer when you bought it in 1997? I sure can. From the time I was a, a very young man, I remember many of the people in our community here had Airstream trailers and they were so different from anything else that I had seen that I became curious over the years and uh, the background of many of the of the families who had the Airstreams was that of the aviation industry and it's a natural migration for pilots designers engineers to come over into the Airstream trailer if they want to have something that they're familiar with and probably things that were designed by engineers that they already knew because many of the early ones came out of, uh, out of the uh, aviation uh, industry uh, both by um, personnel as well as suppliers and so on. So as we went on, I was always aware of them and I have a very close friend who told me one time, uh, probably it's been 30 years or more, uh, we were starting to look at trailers. And he said to me, he said, Pete, don't buy anything other than an Airstream. You know, my father and mother had one. It lasted them their whole life just about. And my uncle and he said, I don't know though that my uncle's gonna, aunt and uncle are gonna be doing much more with their Airstream. And do you want me to see if they might be interested in selling it? Well, he did, and they weren't interested because they, they weren't Airstreaming, but they also weren't doing anything with it. And that is this trailer. Unfortunately, they fell on ill health, and my friend and his cousin were both in charge of the estate or to be a state and uh, we ended up buying this uh, trailer which had been in that family since its origin. Interestingly enough a little bit later on a 1979 Airstream motorhome which was also in the family came up for sale and we were able to buy that. So the whole thing was very comfortable and uh, it gives me a pleasure to know that even though those folks are not with us, including my very good friend who, whom I lost a couple of years ago, uh, that this goes on in their absence and I think they'd, they'd all be happy about that. You know, one of the things that the woman <clears throat> Um, always wanted to do that had this Airstream and the motorhome. She always wanted to go to the international gathering and pull this with the motorhome and that was her dream and I kind of think that I'd like to do that some sometime too. I don't know if it'll ever happen because we, we haven't restored the motorhome but that's our plan so I 
I like this because it's more like a house. It's more like when I first walked into it, it was more like a little cabin. And when we're in a campground, there's, there's plenty of room for us, even with two dogs. And I just, I don't mind entertaining in this and it's comfortable and we really, we enjoy the whole lifestyle. Yes, we were able to, uh, I think one of the first things we did after buying this was to join the club yeah. and uh, in an effort to learn more about what we could and couldn't do, should and shouldn't do, and, and we did that and we began to really embrace the club and its activities and uh, the Washington DCU unit is the uh, one that we chose to join and Star was membership chair uh, for probably four or five years. And late. president. I was the president and too. You were the yeah. first female president. Yeah. I'll just say first president. Anything else I might say could get me in a lot of trouble <laughs> with your viewers probably. But uh, but most, I shouldn't say most, but some of our dearest friends are in that that unit and it's primarily made up of people who like the vintage units and we have members in 22 states and I know I sound like a membership chair again but it's true they're not just from a 50 mile radius you know you go to a rally and there are people there from Florida uh, we had a rally here in October one woman drove all the way up from Florida by herself just to come to our rally another couple came from uh, Virginia North Carolina New Hampshire, New Hampshire uh, you know Massachusetts so it's just a it's a gratifying thing to have a community that you can always trust and I know if something happens to me or Peter everyone will come to the other person's aid and help and that's just sort of an airstream mantra don't you think yeah and that's how I met the two of you 19 years ago yeah. when I first started getting into the airstream lifestyle was a uh, uh, meet and greet at the dealership but also yep. introducing the local club to us and and learning a little bit about that uh, community and, and since then being a, a member myself uh, it's a great asset being an owner of a product that you have all this support out there is, is incredible yes can you give any tips to our viewers maybe someone that's looking to buy a vintage Airstream for the first time I'm like where do you even start well, if you can find someone, uh, the most of the uh, internet um, activity is open to pretty much anyone who wants to uh, be on it or find information and find someone in your area who understands the uh, the process of buying and I'll say restoring or making uh, a trailer. Uh, usable Function, yeah. if you're if you're thinking of buying something at a lower price uh, beware because the cost of doing a restoration uh, can escalate very quickly and if you have someone who's familiar with the cost of of the various um, components it it would be enough probably to um, to set you in the right direction and if you're fortunate that person would go with you to inspect the yeah. the trailer because there's more to it than just renovating the inside there's Absolutely. frame and axle and all the major systems and appliances that's correct every vintage airstream we've ever bought and we have six at this point we did I think had nine at one one point but every single one of them at the front door had a rotted floor so that is for me, that's the one, the first place I would check because you're coming in there anyway. You may as well look at it. And another thing is to just don't take as much stuff as you think you need. Take less because you can always go to a 7-Eleven. You don't, need, you don't need as much stuff. You travel light. Try to travel light, but take someone with you. That's it. That would be my best yeah. advice. And and there are forums uh, that you can participate in. Uh, you know, I want to buy this, that, or the other thing, or I'm looking at it. Uh, does anyone have any tips? And many times the, you'll get six or seven answers uh, and things to look out for in a particular model and year. Yeah. There's and, also the Vintage Airstream Club, and that's a great resource. It's a yes. terrific resource. Yes, it is. And it's not like you could just buy a lot of these parts over the counter. Uh, a lot of the, even though Airstream still builds trailers and they've been building them for 90 years, 
a lot of the parts for some of the components are not manufactured anymore. So someone looking to buy a vintage trailer, they do have to do a little bit of retrofitting for new parts and bits. That's correct. Many times you have to make them yourself if you can. Some of it's pretty easy, some of it's quite difficult. Uh, but there are ways to do all kinds of things. If you enjoy the challenge of doing something that not everyone has, or creating something not everyone has, and doing things uh, yourself, it's, it's a good fit probably. But just uh, try to talk it over with someone who's done it, and uh, that would be my best advice again. Well, Peter and Star, thank you very much for taking the time out of your day this beautiful day here, spring, and uh, uh, to giving us a tour of your beautiful trail and a bit of knowledge about uh, what, how some of the systems work and where they are and a little bit of advice for someone looking to buy a vintage trailer. Well, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please like this video, comment, share, and subscribe. I love it, and we'll see you soon. Bye.